when I first contacted you about getting on the podcast, you were telling me a story about how you got into video creation. And I, I was floored. I was like, man, why haven't I heard this yet? So could you please just give a little details on to, as to why you started YouTube? Yeah, it, it's, I, I was really excited that you were interested in hearing the story. I, I was, um, have been debating for a really long time whether it was something that I wanted to make a full vlog about, to be honest. But I do, I would make like 10 vlogs about it. <laughs> I, I would like, dude, when you're, when you're big and you're on the lecture circuit, that's going to be the thing. Uh, but, but I, I don't want to hype it up too much, but c continue. Yeah. So yeah, it is kind of a crazy story. I mean, so, uh, 10 years ago, short of two weeks and two weeks, it'll be, uh, no, nine years ago, short of two weeks. Um, it will be, uh, the anniversary date of, um, when I was hit by a car. So I was a semi pro triathlete sponsored, sponsored by Cliff Bar. Um, prior to that, I'd had a, a pretty good lineage of sponsors. Um, Odwalla Bar before they were owned by Coca Cola, um, picked me up. So they, uh, sponsored me for several years and then Balance Bar. And then I had the good fortune of being picked up by Cliff Bar and I was a sponsored triathlete. Um, I was out training on my bicycle with my wife and a really good friend of mine. And it was just the three of us riding roads um, out in the county. We call it the county. It's um, not busy at all. There's uh, very little traffic out there. And there's not a bike lane, but there's a decent shoulder that's marked by a white line. So, you know, we're always riding the shoulder. And um, so we were just having a great evening ride. And what I can remember is um, not a whole lot, to be honest, but what I can remember is we uh, we rode down across these train tracks. We were doing this beautiful little winding road. There was this family of raccoons that crossed the road in front of us, this big, huge mama raccoon. And uh, she had like four or five little baby raccoons behind her. And we had just been commenting on that. And then we came up to this stop sign. We stopped and um, we all just stood there for a minute. And we were trying to decide whether or not we were good for the night or whether we were going to head home. And it was pretty oh, early gosh. in the evening. It was like... Um, 5.30, 5.45 in the evening. And uh, yeah, silly me. I said, you know, let's get in another half hour or so because we had done this loop. There was another short loop that we could add on. And I said, you know, let's go add on this other loop and name the road names. And uh, then we'll head home and have some dinner. And um, everybody agreed. We took the right turn to do that extra little loop. And it was about um, three or four minutes after that, that um, my world just completely changed forever. Everything um, sort of disappeared from me because I, I don't honestly remember pretty much anything after that. Uh, there was a teenager in the car and he was sitting next to his buddy. Um, the story that he gave was that his windshield wiper wasn't working. The sun was in his eyes and he was reaching out his side window on the driver's side trying to fix the windshield wiper blade while he had you know sprayed the windshield to clean it off. And they didn't realize that they had actually hit me until probably at almost a quarter of a mile down the road. Um, they, like, they had no idea that they had hit something, but their, um, the entire front of the car was, the hood of the car was um, crumpled. I blew out the windshield, although it was still intact. It was completely destroyed, and I crumpled the hood of the car, like the top of the car. Um, my wife said that she saw me do at least two flips in the air before I came down and landed on my head and shoulders. And, um, fortunately the next car that came by within seconds was a first responder emergency nurse. She called 911 and she stayed with me until the ambulance came. And I honestly don't really remember very much from, um, any of that except laying on the ground and my wife was holding my hand and, um, she was saying, you know, are you going to be okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And I remember laying there and being, um, completely calm, like nothing had ever happened. I had just woken up from basically a nap, it felt like. And I was like, I'm totally fine. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to be okay. There's, you know, nothing to worry about. I'm totally fine. Um, the ambulance obviously came really quickly. They took me to the hospital. And um, yeah, I had um, some very significant injuries that they were uh, quite surprised that I even survived. So uh, very Jesus, lucky man. to be here today. Golly. Like, I can't, uh, man, ever since starting this podcast, I just like, I, like learning all these stories behind, like everybody's got a story, but man, when you told me that I was like, what, what? Oh, I'm so glad you're here though. 
That's that's crazy. That's the biggest gift of all, right? Is um, just still being here. And and I sort of remember not to get too hokey pokey into it, but I sort of remember at that moment laying on the ground that um, I had a choice of uh, either leaving this world or staying, and I decided to stay. And the big impetus of that was that my wife was pregnant at the time, uh, so I was very fortunate <laughs> to be hit. So um, she was she was not touched. My friend riding was not touched. And had it been my wife, obviously my daughter wouldn't be here today. So I really feel like, um, and I, I keep trying to find a reason, right? There's got to be a reason behind it. So I think I must have taken the hit to save my wife and my daughter, I'm guessing. Um, until I find something different, that's what I'm going with. That is just like, that's some chosen stuff there. Golly, man. It's so crazy. Where I was getting at with that is, uh, from what you were telling me, because you couldn't pursue your triathlete, uh, I guess, career at that point, you started picking up video, correct? I did, yeah. So I was, after that point, I was really unable to, it took me a full two years to uh, recover to a stable point, And I really wasn't able to train at any significant level. I mean, keeping in shape is my primary goal and um, it, that's a challenge. So um, training was out of the picture. Racing obviously was not in the equation at all. Um, and that was my that was my passion. I mean, I had a full-time job, but that's what I did 10 to 30 hours a week, right? It was trained for triathlon. So when that was taken away and recovery was not a primary job anymore, trying to heal up and find out where I sit in this world. Um, I was looking for something that I could do that um, added meaning to my life and actually contributed something to the greater world. So when I was a triathlete, it felt a little bit selfish, although I think there's a lot of things that um, triathletes contribute to the world. Um, I felt like I was taking all of these hours every week, primarily for myself and my own betterment. But um, then when I was able to sort of segue into something new, I was looking for something that uh, not only would help me with my recovery and the memory loss that um, I continue to struggle with because of the accident, um, it just photography and video really clicked for me. And my wife was still racing. She still races. So being able to uh, video her races and uh, do photography at her races, uh, do video of both of my girls. I've got a 17-year-old and an 8-year-old, um, two daughters. And to do photography and video for them uh, at their events uh, is great for me because I can look back and I can remember it in ways that I'm just not capable of remembering uh, due to the head trauma that I had Um and really the only struggles that I have with video is learning new things as I go. Cause like I said, you know, a year and a half ago, my DJI Mavic bag was, um, it's kind of a garbage video, but it's been seen a lot of times. And my vision isn't great because before the accident, I didn't wear glasses. And if I don't wear glasses now, my vision split. So I see down here out of one eye and up here out of another eye. So I have to wear glasses for that. And that makes uh, focusing and, um, framing and stuff like that a little bit of a challenge, but I think I've overcome that really well. Um, so really, this was something that I could effectively do and be successful at and pour some of that energy and time into that I used to pour into training and racing. So um, it was a great fit for me. And uh, the path has been wide open with YouTube and meeting people like you and uh, being able to um, just just complete projects for I, I've done a lot of projects for corporate events. I did a Hyatt Maui video. I've done videos for um, some action sports companies um, that put on races, which has been great. Uh, Matador Sports Equipment Company. I did a video for them. Um, I did one for Boosted Board. Uh, so, you know, I've had these opportunities come to me through this avenue that um, that's opened up new worlds to me. And it's been uh, it's been a really big win for me. And I'm very grateful to have it. Oh boy, Harvey, what's up, man? Jeez, that's crazy. 